Hello, John. Thanks Hi. for coming along to uh, talk about management and your experience with levels of work. My pleasure. Um, <clears throat> let's start with the most general question of all. What is levels of work about for you? It's about achievement through systematic management uh, in the organisations that I was chief executive of in the National Health Service. I use levels of work as a tool, one tool, but obviously not the only tool, to ensure that they were high performing and high achieving organisations for patients, the public and, and indeed for themselves. Uh, when you say achievements, I mean what sort of achievements uh, would you... Yeah, well I was uh, chief executive of three different uh, organisations in the National Health Service, Kings Mill Hospital in North Nottinghamshire, Bromley in London and the Royal Cornwall Hospitals Trust in Cornwall. And each one of those was a challenged organisation when I went to it. Indeed, Cornwall was the worst performing uh, trust in the NHS. And I improved the function, by the time I'd left, I'd improved the functioning and, uh, and performance of those organisations significantly. In particular, in relation to two of the organisations, uh, Kings Mill and Bromley, I, I made them three star trusts. And I'm a, I'm a member of a small group of NHS chief executives who have managed to deliver one, more than one three star trust in the old performance framework in terms of the performance of their organisations. Uh, for Kings Mill Hospital, which subsequently became Kings Mill Centre, that became an award-winning organisation. And in 1996, we won the Team of the Year Award for our work on urgent care continuity. And in 1998, we won the Welcome Glaxo uh, Innovation Award in uh, primary care for our work with uh, Allerton Practice. So, how would you say levels of work specifically is related to those achievements? Well, for, it creates a framework for thinking about responsibility and roles and strong, uh, a strong view of accountability relations. It helps in assessing capability against the job to match, to make sure you've got a good match between uh, applicants and job. And it helps to integrate purposes with responsibilities so that one could assure, assure the delivery of objectives and purposes through roles and responsibilities and people within them. But of course achievement requires a lot more than just uh, levels of work, I'd say just levels of work, but a focus on levels of work, it needs more than that. And I would say, for example, it's very important to have the skeleton, but then we need to make the skeleton work and to dynamise that. And one of the examples I would give to add is uh, work across level five and three on programme installation, something that we create, that we recognise a channel that needs to be activated by the chief executive to go down to level three to make sure that what's being said at level four is true and that in reality we are getting systems, we are getting improved quality. So we have the levels of work, very important, but also we need to work across levels and dynamise that to get true achievement. Mm. Uh, so does that mean when you first enter an organisation that uh, you, you, you always implement levels of work? No, actually rarely. I think uh, to start initially when uh, one gets into an organisation, one's faced with the inevitable crises of a challenged organisation. And chief executives are expected to perform, and, in, and indeed, the, the first 100 days or the first few months of uh, chief executive tenure, you do have a significant opportunity to make an impact. And you have to be seen to make an impact and solving problem. You can't wait for levels of work to be introduced. You have to do it in parallel. But I think the key priority is to work with through pragmatic action and to start resolving some of the crises that one's inherited before, often before levels of work is introduced. I mean, can you give a, an example? Yes, I can. Uh, Royal Coma Hospitals Trust, I think, was perhaps the best example uh, of, uh, as I said, it, it, I inherited the worst performing, recognised the worst performing trust in England. And when I got there, I found there were crises in every, almost every situation. There was a financial crisis, for example, there was a staff morale crisis, there was a community confidence crisis. There was a medical records project that was uh, in deep difficulties, for example. So almost everywhere one looked in the organisation there were problems and issues. And it simply wouldn't have been acceptable to, for a chief executive to say, well, I need to wait to introduce levels of work and get roles and responsibilities clear and bring in new people. I had to basically get stuck in and sort some of these problems out. So you have to be seen to be doing that in, in tandem with introducing new, more systematic modes to move the organisation on. But really, as we've always said, chief executives are always going to be judged on action to solve problems and create achievement in the organisation. So you have to start with levels, uh, with uh, pragmatic uh, handling. 
But then, then you do always move on to getting the structures set up correctly via levels of work. Absolutely, yeah. We, you need to, to move on to uh, getting levels of work in place uh, to clarify roles and responsibilities. Uh, and, and, and also many, there are many other values that are involved in, in that phase, structuralist phase, uh, not just at levels of work. Uh, for example, it's very important uh, to have a focus on professional uh, capability, professional responsibility to assure quality across a, an organisation like the National Health Service, which is multi-professional. Uh, it's important to focus on procedural control and systems at all levels in the organisation, but particularly at level three, just above the operations, to ensure get it right first time every time for patients. And it's important to have appropriate teams and meetings in place uh, to work in tandem with uh, levels of work and the other systems and uh, professional capability to make sure that the overall organisation functions better as uh, you move into that stru second structuralist phase. You have accountable expert leadership in place. Um, does that ensure achievement? It's one part of uh, securing achievement and, and focuses very much on the operations, but there is a, a model of domains of functioning. There are four domains of functioning which chief executives and organisations need to, need to operate in. Reforming the operations is one, and it's often the one that's focused on to the exclusion of others, but cultural development uh, around the spiral that we talked about that I, that I mentioned, getting more and more sophisticated forms of uh, styles of management is, is a key part. Identity, clarifying the identity of an organisation, what business are we in and what, are what we not in, that's a key part of functioning. And also uh, an area called growth where you build on strengths of the organisation. And those four domains of functioning need to be in balance, working across together, not just focusing on one at the expense of the others, to ensure, to secure sustainable and long-term improvements and efficiency. Right. So achievement depends upon <coughs> growth as much as well-functioning operations. It depends on culture and the values in the organisation in general. It depends upon having a vision. Absolutely. Just, just to say... Um, that's right, they're, they're important. And just to give an example of the identity and work that we did on that at uh, Kings Mill, um, we had a, a participatory exercise right throughout the organisation to clarify what work should we be in and what work weren't we in, and what was the essence of the organisation, what was the mission of the organisation. And what became clear was we were a specialist centre for healthcare, uh, we weren't just a hospital. Much already, much of, the, much of the care was provided in primary care or there was education to primary care or outreach work. Already clinicians were working in that way. But the organisation's structure didn't reflect that. So we, and, and identity didn't reflect that. So we re, renamed and, and reconceived the organisation as the King's Mill Centre for Healthcare Services. Actually years ahead of what is current thinking now, which is the, the age of the DGH is finished, well in 1996 we'd seen that and we'd identified the centre. And it was that role as the centre of healthcare services that won us that innovation prize, working with primary care. Right, so um, you, with, within a well-functioning structure, so the operations are effective, with attention being given to development, uh, culture and, and, and to a vision, um, is, can you... Can you uh, uh, as it were, sit back and enjoy the fruits of management? No, no you can't because um, it is a dynamic situation and uh, one phase of improvement leads inexorably to another one and if you, if you don't give attention to managing that you can actually regress. Uh, so the structuralist phase, we reintroduce very strong people, very strong professions, they can start to rub together and there can be conflicts and, and, and if they're not handled and uh, managed in a proper way you can get serious problems inside the organisation. So as I mentioned, the dialectic phase, the next one where people work together better, leads to a desire for more optimal achievement, optimising achievement, better focus on objectives and values, the rationalist phase. And then that, in turn, the, 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 the drive for its achieving objectives, more and more demands for information, moving to the empiricist phase, a much better valuing of information. And I think that we got to rationalist, moving on to empiricist, by the time I'd, I'd left it, I, I finished my tenure in Kings Mill Centre. Our audience wants me to focus on levels of work, so I just have to ask you a little bit about capability and matching work capability to, to a role. That's very important. Yeah. Would you say 
uh, that, that captures what's required. It captures a lot of what's required, but there's an additional dimension, which is decision style. That individuals have their own preferred and, and uh, optimum decision style. And that needs to be recognised and, and matched to the requirements of the job and indeed the stage of the organisation so that one can extract, one can get optimum performance and achievement uh, from individuals and the organisation generally. So there's a further so, framework so that's required to be Not considered. every role can cope with every decision. Absolutely, style. yes. And some role, for example, uh, obviously an obvious one will be a finance director uh, needs to have an empiricist de uh, decision style or be, or be comfortable with an empiricist decision style for him to be an effective finance director. It's, it's clear that achieving is always a challenge. Management is complicated. It requires many tools. Also, you're a natural leader. In your experience, what is the biggest challenge to achievement? Well, you, you introduced me to a framework which deals with how people interact in social situations, um, wider than the, wider, wider than organisational base, but relevant to organisations. And within that, there are various modes of modes that uh, that, are, that are important. The one that was that I found to be most challenging was the power mode, where people basically function through intimidation, threats, and uh, and so on. And uh, it can be a very significant challenge to an organisational leader, an organisation who's trying to adopt and implement systematic, uh, a systematic approach to management. And I found that some people had people in the organisation who operated in a power centre way. The system itself started to, uh, to do that. And that was probably the biggest challenge I, I ever faced to continuing and improving achievement uh, for patients in, in the NHS. Thanks a lot, John. I appreciate your contribution. Thank you.